Even if there were more disadvantages to it, I would still do it for the sole reason that it's so. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Monday, April 1st here in South Georgia, and we're finally gonna get our sweet corn planted today. So we're gonna talk about this double row technique that we used last year that we're gonna use again this year, and talk about the variety of corn we're gonna be planting, and then we'll show you how we do it. So ideally, I would have planted my sweet corn around mid-March, and it would already be about this tall right now, but I kind of missed my window. And when you're trying to get sweet corn planted early, it's really all about windows. So today it's about 80 degrees out here, and we've got a stretch of about three or four warm days and some rain coming in a few days, which is the perfect window to get some sweet corn planted. But then this weekend, it's gonna cool off again and start getting back down in the 40s at night, and I probably wouldn't wanna plant it then. These super sweet varieties that we like to grow, you need warmer soils to get some fast, good germination with those. So you kinda of have to pick your spots. I missed my spot in the middle of March, then it kind of cooled off a little bit. Then we had a ton of rain. It was too wet around here. It's finally dried out, finally got some warm weather. So the timing is right. So just like we're doing with tomatoes this year, we're scaling back on our sweet corn a little bit. Instead of planting an entire 30 by 35 plot, we're only gonna plant a little over half this plot. Right here, we've got a late round of some lettuce and some brassicas we planted. The lettuce is looking really good. The brassicas, not so much. But anyways, just gonna plant this much corn this year because we still have plenty in the freezer. And we're gonna use that double row technique that we used last year. So we've got these rows already laid out out space 40 inches apart. So with this double row planting technique that we'll demonstrate later in the video, instead of planting our sweet corn seeds right on top of the drip tape like we did for many, many years on say a 30 to 36 inch row spacing, we're planting a row of sweet corn on each side of the drip tape and putting the rows 40 inches apart. Now, although I really, really like this technique last year, and obviously I'm doing it again this year, there are some disadvantages to it. So let's talk about the advantages and then the disadvantages to this double row corn technique. So number one, you can grow more sweet corn in less space. So if you're limited on garden space, you can still put a decent amount of sweet corn in the freezer using this double row technique. It's not exactly a two to one difference compared to single row planting because we are using a wider row spacing, but you do get significantly more corn out of a given plot. The second advantage, if you're using drip tape, you now get two rows of corn per one line of drip tape. So I've got six lines of drip tape out here. If I was doing it the old way, that would only mean six rows of corn. But now I can get 12 rows of corn out of these six lines of tape. And number three, this is the biggest one in my opinion. It is so much easier to remove the drip tape after the corn is done when you plant on double rows like this. When you plant that sweet corn right on top of the tape, which works well, you can grow some amazing sweet corn that way. It is a booger to pull up that tape later because you got all those corn roots wrapped around it. With the double row technique, the roots kind of stay to the side of the drip tape and you just go pull it right up, easy peasy. So those are the advantages, but there are some disadvantages that we need to talk about. One, when you're growing corn this close together, stacking in there that tight, that means the water needs and the fertility needs are gonna be increased. You gotta be prepared to give it enough water when you're planting it that tight and also give it enough fertilizer. With the drip tape, we can handle the water. We just know that we need to fertilize it even more than if we were doing single rows. And just as an aside to that, we get a lot of questions about how far apart to plant sweet corn seeds. And it really has to do with your irrigation and how much fertilizer you're willing to give it. So you can plant sweet corn really, really close if you've got irrigation and you've got the fertility there. I see every year these commercial sweet corn growers around here, seems like they get their seeds closer and closer every single year, but they've got them on a pivot. They're willing to water the snot out of them and they're willing to fertilize the snot out of them. Disadvantage number two, I gotta plant these things by hand. The way I do my little mini furrows on each side of the tape, I can't use my walk behind cedar, so I do have to drop the seeds by hand. It doesn't take that long with six double rows or even a whole plot of it. it. Only takes me about 30 minutes or so, but it does slow things down compared to using a walk behind cedar. 
And just as an aside to that, because I know somebody is going to comment this once they see me dropping these seeds by hand in a minute. That whole deal where you're walking along with a pipe and dropping a seed down there. Listen, I ain't got that much time. I understand if your back's bad and you can't bend over or whatever. But I can plant significantly faster walking along there, dropping them by hand than sitting and dropping one seed through a pipe at a time. I get why people like that technique. It's just not for me. It's way, way too slow. And then the third disadvantage is that it's harder to weed double rows than it is single rows because we've got this little bit of space between those double rows there. And so if you're going to do this, I would recommend doing it in a plot where you have a relatively low weed seed bank. If you do this in a plot where you have some really high weed pressure, it's probably going to get kind of messy on you. It's going to be hard to keep those weeds under control. So keep that in mind before you go the double row route. And then the fourth disadvantage, growing on double rows, packing those corn rows in there tight makes it harder to spray for worms, especially once the corn gets taller and you start getting those silks. So we use a lot of spinosad around here. We'll use BT sometimes for corn earworms. We always get them, so we are always prepared to spray for them. And so if you're doing double rows, I would probably recommend starting to spray maybe knee high, waist high, kind of try to knock them out early before you get those silks because once those corn plants get tall it gets harder to get that spray down in there onto those ears and kill those worms so as you can see just by going through those disadvantages there this technique is not going to be for everyone but i really like it even if there were more disadvantages to it i would still do it for the sole reason that it's so much easier to pull up that drip tape after it's done nothing i hate worse than being out here on a hot summer day with a shovel trying to dig up corn plants and get my drip tape up so i can plant a cover crop next with the double rows makes it so much easier and that is a one big reason i like this technique and as you saw earlier i came out here a couple hours ago laid off my rows made a furrow went ahead and put some drip tape in those furrows we already had this main line in place because we were using drip to feed that lettuce and those brassicas over there so we just had to connect those drip lines into the main line now all we need to do is add a little pre-plant fertilizer and cover that tape so I'll add a big scoop of this Coop Grow fertilizer per row. A little bigger scoop than I normally use because we are doing double rows. Then we'll go ahead and hook up our water hose. That way we can get those drip lines nice and inflated and stretched out before we cover them with soil. Then we'll take our wheel hoe and cover up this tape, which will also create our little mini furrows that we need to plant our double rows. And now we're set up ready to plant a row right here and a row right here for each line of tape that we have in the ground. But before we start dropping some seeds, we should probably talk about what variety of sweet corn we're going to be planting. Now, if you've been following the channel a while, you know I'm a huge fan of these augmented super sweet varieties bred by a company called Crookham Seeds. Now these are not GMO corn varieties. I know that word augmented throws people off. These are just varieties where they've mixed different corn genes to get a desired result. So these augmented super sweets have a nice crunch to them. They're also really, really sweet. Great for eating raw, but also great for putting in the freezer. So the variety we have here is called Nirvana. This is a bicolor augmented super sweet. And I thought this was the only augmented super sweet that I hadn't grown yet. Until earlier, I went on Crookham Seeds website and realized they had just released a bunch more. So the augmented super sweets that I have grown, I grew one called Eden a few years ago. That was a white corn, really, really good. Grew a bicolor called Solstice. It was really, really good. But it appears they have come out with quite a few more. Like I said, they've got one called White Lightning, Golden Halo, Globe Trotter, Equinox, and they got several more on their website. If you want to do a deep dive into this, just Google Crookham Seeds to go to their website and you can click the different corn types look under augmented super sweet you'll see all these varieties you can't buy them from there but you can see the varieties and then find somewhere online that has them but anyways i much prefer these super sweet varieties because of the long harvest window they don't get starchy really fast we've got about a 10 day harvest window so we don't have to 
pick them at just the right time on just the right day like you do some of the older sweet corn varieties we also have a longer processing window i can take this corn i can cut it all off the cob leave it in the fridge for a couple days and then freeze it if i can't do it all in one day and don't have to worry about it going starchy so that's the big advantage to the super sweets in my opinion yes they taste great but that long harvest that long processing window is absolutely necessary for me now as i mentioned earlier how far apart you put your corn seeds is going to depend a lot upon the irrigation you have we've got a drip tape with a six inch emitter spacing here puts out plenty of water so i'm going to put my seeds about six inches apart but if you don't have good irrigation you probably want to put them about eight to twelve inches apart so the better the irrigation system the closer you can plant it. I'm going to go ahead and start dropping some seeds here. Like I said, about six inches apart. We can always come back and thin later if we need to. And so the last step, we just need to take our handy dandy garden rake here and lightly cover those seeds. We don't need them planted real deep. We've got plenty of water here and we'll come back behind it, tamp them down like that. So we'll let that drip run for several hours until the entire width of those double roads is nice and soaked. We'll be able to tell because the soil will be darker where the water is there. Some people will tell you that you can't get good germination with subsurface drip like that, but that's baloney. You can get really good germination. Just got to soak the beds good. We do it all the time. And I have seen sweet corn seeds germinate in as few as three days with some good hot dirt and good soil moisture. I don't know how long these are going to take, but we're headed out of town later this week because the boys are on spring break. So by the time I get back, we should have corn popping. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Let me know in the comments below what variety or varieties of sweet corn you're growing this year. As always, you can find that Coop Grow fertilizer and a lot of the other products we use around here on our website at lazydogfarm.com. If you wanna know more about our irrigation setup here and all the specific pieces that goes into putting it together, watch this video where we installed the other half of this drip system. We'll break it down piece by piece. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.